But speaking of um, getting caught in, maybe, tell me <laughs> a little bit about uh, Quantum Bummer Blues. Um, okay, so it's like this, uh, it's like a arcade uh, sort of narrative sort of thing. It's like a, I, like I went for like a 50-50 split between like arcade gameplay and like strong narrative focus on yeah. it. And it's um, this game where you're playing as like a trail of blood and you're, you, it, like the, the blood is pouring out of this uh, like dead girl who's stuck in a, like a space prison. And your, your blood is like pouring uh, like underground through the walls and uh, you're uh, trying to escape prison. And it's a, sort of a story about um, uh, sort of like prison and like mental, mental institutions and like uh, sort of, uh, writing from the perspective of, of like trying to be like empathetic to people that are like you know in prison and right. like that sort of thing uh so it's it's a lot like it's it's a yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of things i think that's uh, that um uh the the beauty of short form art in like it's like all it's it's a lot of things in a very small package like clearly someone had like there's a lot of ideas all going on <laughs> at once and the contrast into some things that are like 80 hours long and have one idea. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's my, that's my biggest pet peeve with games at the moment. I like, I just want like with, with quantum bummer blues, I really try to pare everything down to be like as, as simple as possible. Like I chose like a, the game is basically running in like an Atari resolution. Like I, I want as much, as much like ideas in as small of a space as I can possibly manage. You know? Right. Right. I think, that, right. <laughs> I think you can you get that a lot in, uh, independent art. Cause maybe right, they, exactly, yeah. they feel like everything could be their last also. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or just like the, the lack of, so speaking of, I have a very specific question from an anonymous. Ooh. Uh, what inspired <laughs> you? Cause I, I this does not technically this is not addressed to you but also technically it does not apply to either of our other guests okay <laughs> which is what inspired you to use blood as the character you control oh uh it was uh it was based on a nightmare i had um where i was like killed by the mafia and like as i was laying there dying i had to like i was still like conscious and i was trying to like find a way to signal for help and as soon as i woke up from that i was like wow that was a really weird nightmare i should write that down because maybe yeah. i can make it make a game out of it and then uh i sort of sat on it for a while because like the initial idea it was just like it would probably just be something like the game ghost trick i don't know if you're familiar with yes, that very familiar with ghost trick yeah yeah so but like you know and i like ghost trick but i didn't run it i didn't want to like copy that game so yeah. the the blood concept just kind of sat in my notes app for a while um, but then I was, it was, uh, I was listening to a Johnny Cash record about a year ago. Uh, the one he recorded in Folsom prison. Uh, that's very, very apropos you say that because I was thinking exactly about that album in. in yeah. 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 So it was it, the game. Mm -hmm, yeah. So the, uh, uh, the final track on that album, uh, it's Greystone Chapel, which was written by one of the inmates in the prison at the time. And, um, the chorus is. Inside the walls of prison, my body may be, but my Lord has set my soul free. And as soon as I heard that, I it, it made me think about some stuff that happened to me uh, a few years ago, and it made me think about that blood concept. And I was like, and it, listening to that album in that moment was like, was that was like my my uh, my vision from God, I guess, where I was right. like, I should make a game about this, you know, like, and that's that's when I committed to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was. It's nice when you see like connections and it feels very gratifying to be like yes <laughs> that i was thinking yeah, yeah. of Folsom prison blues when i saw like it had like it was a very uh mental uh, right exactly connection. well i should say that the name quantum bummer blues i'm a big fan of this folk artist her name is judy sill um she had a song that she wrote she wrote when she was in prison uh, called Dead Time Bummer Blues, and that's where the name Quantum Bummer Blues comes from. Yeah, I, I, I really liked, I, I like Bummer Blues as a phrase a lot, so I yes. just stole it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a very good, a very yeah. good, uh, like, uh, I don't know what to call it, but like... Alliteration to it? Yeah, just a great mouthfeel. Yeah, yeah, great mouthfeel. <laughs> yeah, that was, sorry, I... I'm, anyway, I, I opened up a new tab. This is opening up tabs of looking at artists and so looking at Judy Sill because there's 
there's um infinite music and i don't know all of it yeah, I, I love judy so she's a beautiful voice and like her song the phoenix was like a huge inspiration while i was working on that game i think like like lyrically that is just like the prettiest song i've ever a huge like inspiration in terms of like like for like the actual like writing of the game came a lot from like gospel music and like country music and folk music like there's a the game opens on like a quote from neil young pretty big on the game so stuff like that. yeah i think there's um i've i see it a lot on this show it's very important that people take influences for games on things that are not games exactly i think that's uh i i always take for every game i've made like the initial inspiration has always been music yeah. and then like i i work in some game like inspirations but i think a big problem especially in a lot of like like you see it in like the like indie projects that are more that are like bigger uh, scale sort of thing yeah um like double a sort of thing where like you can tell the only like reference point they have is like other video games and the and like the you can tell like the initial pitch was just like oh what if we made like super metroid but it was also dark souls and i just think right that kind of, that kind of stuff is just like it's just kind of played out and a little boring you right know right I mean? right you can see you can see the bones of all the other games that they put together to make that game right which i feel like is kind of missing the point yeah. of like being an independent artist what if you know what, what I mean? if we made binding of isaac but it kind of looked like don't starve uh, yeah no no <laughs> but also it, it was kind of it, it was um using like the wholesome vibes oh god <laughs> um yeah yeah it, it it feels like you you feel i don't know an an emptiness i think yeah for sure for sure which is, which is... but that's the weird thing about games is that they can still be enjoyable to play even if they're kind of empty yeah yeah and then it, it, it always kind of kind of stings like this this year the game sifu uh yeah. came out and like like I, I think that game's like aesthetically like fine but like i know like like gameplay wise i really like what it's doing but i just think the visuals are so like drab to me and i have a right. hard time i just had a hard time like sticking with it i haven't beaten it yet even though it's like you know my thing like arcade beat em up like i'm there but i just i haven't had i haven't felt that pull from it you know well, speaking of your thing being arcade beat 'em up, but also yeah. make art games, we got a question from Hot Pocket HPE, Ooh. which is philosophy on balancing dyna- dynamism versus constructed challenges and challenges in actually gameplay. For example, in Quantum Bomber Blues, how much the chaotic bouncing of atoms contributes versus the fixed fixed level geometry? Do you prefer Do you prefer leaning one way or the other? Seems to oh, me that for- many. Many older games, classic shmups, FPS, etc., had strong level design tradition, but modern contemporaries, and modern is in some good scare quotes, mm-hmm. uh, don't focus on it as much. Agree or disagree? Reasons for this? It's a very long question. But... That is a very long question. Hot Pocket, <laughs> that guy will that guy'll answer or ask a long question. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, so I guess the philosophy what he was he was talking about um i came at it from as far as like level design is concerned i do not care about level design i'm just not interested all i care about is like mechanics and like weird um very dynamic uh mechanics like that like all of the level designs were just like either drawings that i literally like scribbled out on my drawing tablet in like five minutes or they were like photographs like one of the one of the levels is is literally just a picture of my dog um that i like compressed down and put into the game and it was sort of like just because i think it's like that's a funny thing to do because like (laughs) like most games just aren't even there but also like i wanted to sort of uh see and like sort of prove myself prove to myself that i could make something uh that mechanically is like so strong that the level design is completely irrelevant you know what i mean like like regardless like a level could be a picture of my dog or like a picture of my open mouth and the game would still be fun to play you know what i mean um because one of my biggest pet peeves in in a lot of games is um just level design in general and when level design constricts mechanics and when uh uh you know there's there's always that one segment where there's there's like one mechanic that you love using but because of the level design you can't use that mechanic i hate that (laughs) that always that always bugs me (laughs) yeah that i i'm thinking more about that the idea of the 
the arbitrary branching path, you know, that has the goodies mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, no. <laughs> of like, why, why do those exist? Like, what function do they serve, really? Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. I, I mean, if as a fan of beat em ups, I would say beat em ups have zero level design in them generally. <laughs> and that's great. <laughs> they that's are flat great. planes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, because they're they are strictly mechanical search of things. Right, I'm all about those mechanics, and uh, and one of the things with with Quantum Bummer Blues was like, uh, if like, cause like the mechanics are static throughout basically like the entire game, right? And um, they don't really change all that much. And so a big question I had was like, how am I going to like evolve these mechanics? How can I make? Cause like every screen, you start your blood, you you go up into the open area, then you like smash the atoms. Every screen has nine atoms on it, so it's all the same. Um. And but so I implemented sort of a weird sort of dynamic difficulty system. So like even if the mechanics aren't changing, like your relationship to the mechanics are changing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's sort of there is this sort of build up intention and uh, sort of like your game plan is always changing, even if the mechanics aren't, which was something that I was trying to go for. And I think I I think I sort of pulled it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. At, least, at least two anthologies agree. <laughs> <laughs> um speaking of uh taking pictures of your dog yes we got a quick a question from i'm going to say bean or ben okay it's the, see the name is ben and i would say this word is ben because it has two e's anyway mm -hmm. um graphics being the first thing done in a video game it's a solid meme for a week but is there actually anything you get done on with early that would be interesting to mention um I, I mean, like the graphics are like almost like with all my games, it's it's like I basically just use placeholder sprites, and like I, I at some point I'm, I plan on changing it, but then I'm like I, I just go against it, and I just use the placeholder sprites forever. Yeah. Uh, but like with the way I with the way I design games, like I don't have design documents. I write down very few of my my ideas, so it's like. Game design and just game making in general is like a very, for me, is like a very iterative, uh, slow process. So there's very little uh, that I get out of, that I get done like early on. Right. Uh, like, the, honestly, like Quantum Bummer Blues was not like in like a, what I would consider like a shippable state until like three days before I, before like the release date. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like it, it came together, it did not come together at all until like, right before i had i had announced that i was going to release it <laughs> no, i have a similar i i take a similar um path or a very different path to get there but i have a similar mm -hmm. end point where nothing's done until basically it's done <laughs> right exactly yeah i don't make vertical slices <laughs> yeah no <laughs> that is so you you answered another question inadvertently that maybe we oh, really? have a question of john's that we will hear in full perhaps with a later guest but the final question we have from Tony Finale. Um, mm -hmm. What are your fave and least favorite JRPGs? <laughs> um, gosh, uh, favorite, I would say my mechanically my favorite is Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. Uh, I really loved. Oh, what's that? I was going to say I'm very close to playing Dragon Quarter. It's a very. I highly recommend it. I have not finished it, yeah. but what I played of it was extremely good. If like if if you like Resident Evil at all, it's pretty close to that. Oh, I've been um, playing uh, Evil Within. Lately. Oh, really? And I, oh, I die. Yeah, oh, I, go on. I was gonna say, I, I the second one is kind of like my ideal for survival horror. I think. Really, yeah. I've heard mixed things about that one. It is there is mixed stuff to it, but uh, uh, the movement. If we talk about uh, mechanics, like it feels like I move like I think a horror character should move. Like I can always, yeah. you can always kind of retreat, you know. Mm -hmm. And it feels like that scrambly sort of horror thing where it's either you're ahead or if you're not ahead, you're already behind. Right, right. Yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> that which is like my very specific thing that I want. Uh huh. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, tell me about Dragon. Uh, Dragon yeah, uh, yeah, Dragon Quarter's like that. It's got like the, it's got that Resident Evil like limited save. It has like ink ribbon system. Like the, it's got this like, uh, 
this weird meter where it's like constantly ticking up and if it ever hits 100% like the game is over and you have to restart the entire game uh, so it's like really brutal like that um, so I really like that's one of my favorite JRPGs I also love uh, uh, Earthbound um, the original Dragon Quest um, hmm I think that's probably off the top of my head it for favorites yeah. i don't know i don't know if i have a least favorite jrpg like i'm not a fan of the genre but there's nothing sticks out in my mind as like i played shin megami tensei 5 when it came out last year i thought that game was pretty bad did not care for it uh but generally like generally i think jrpgs i i, I just think i'm just okay on i just think a right. lot of them are just like all right not my cup of tea uh, yeah, <laughs> so no, that's my answer. That's 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 the beauty of genres, you know. Right. It's, it's yeah. the same. It's the same thing across everything. Someone will go very much like. Someone could tell you all the eighteen million subgenres of jazz, and someone also be mm -hmm. like, "I guess it's fine if someone's playing in the background." <laughs> right. <laughs> someone else is like, "No, you don't understand how poison works in this game, versus <laughs> these other games. It's all this one's percentile." Oh, Wait, I forgot to mention Sweet Home. I just had a video about that on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I forgot to mention that one. That one's one of my favorite JRPGs. Sweet Home? Also, yeah, also a horror-ish yeah. adjacent thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, well, perfect. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> that perfectly times for roughly the end of our, our 20 minutes here, Heather. Nice. I know. It just it goes down smooth and quick. Yeah, it was a lot quicker than I uh, imagined. <laughs> no, yeah, it's um, and you, I, I imagine you'll stick around. You're not going anywhere. No, I'm I'm sticking around. Oh, yes, perfect. Uh, well, mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for being involved. In, you know this whole this whole this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we will be back in. Where is this thingy here? Roughly uh, two minutes and forty-seven seconds. All right, everyone. Goodbye for now.